Working again with our joke application, let's change our application so that a developer who is reusing our joke component can also configure how a joke will be displayed on the screen. By the end of this lecture, you're going to learn what is content projection and why might we want to use it. You're going to learn how to project content using the ng content tag, and you're going to learn how to project multiple pieces of content using CSS selectors. So let's say someone else wanted to use our joke component, but instead of displaying the punchline in a P tag, like here, let's say they wanted to display it in a larger H1 tag. So our component right now doesn't let itself be reused like that. We can give it a joke to display, but we can't say how that joke will be rendered. However, we can design our component with something called content projection to enable it to be customized by the component or developer who wants to use it. So if we add the tag ng content anywhere in our template HTML for our component, the inner content of the tags that define our component are then projected into this space. Let me show you. So if we change the template for our joke component to be something like this. So instead of showing data dot punchline. So if we replace data dot punchline with our ng content opening and closing tags, and then if we changed our joke list component template from this into this. What happens is that the H1 tag we've defined in the parent joke list component replaces the ng content tag in the joke component. This is called content projection. We project content from the parent component into our component. So if we create our components to support content projection, then it enables the consumer of our component to configure how exactly they want the component to be displayed. But the downside of content projection is that the joke list component doesn't have access to the properties or methods on the joke component. So the content we are projecting can't bind to properties or methods of our joke component, only the joke list component. So that's why we've had to bind to j dot punchline because the joke list component has access to j. But within our joke component, we're binding to something called data. We don't have access to data in our joke list component. So when we're projecting the content, we can't write data dot punchline because we have no access to it. We can only have access to j, so we use j dot punchline. And just the same way, if there were functions on our joke component, if we were content projecting, we couldn't call those functions from the content that we're trying to project. And now if we run this, and let's take a look at a joke, you can see now it's being rendered with a large H1 tag instead of a P tag. But what if you wanted to define multiple content areas? I mean, we've got a setup and a punchline. Let's make both of those content projectable. And specifically, we want the setup line to always end with a question mark character. I'm using this example for demonstration purposes only, that this problem could easily be solved in a number of other ways, all of them easier than using content projection. So this is just for example only. Let's do this. Let's start off by looking at the content that we want to project in. Let's say, I want it to be a span and I always want it to end in a question mark. So I'll always just hard code the question mark there. And then in our joke component, you might first think that we would add two ng content tags, but we can't do that because Angular doesn't know which ng content tag should link to which content that's getting projected in. To solve this, ng content has another attribute called select. If you pass this select a CSS selector, it will extract only the elements matching the selector from the passed in content. Let me show you. So if we say select span, it will match 
the span and insert that content here. If we say select is h1, it will match the h1 content and store that in the second ng content. But you know, we can do that, but that however can be a bit tricky to manage. Let's use some more meaningful rules matching perhaps by class name. So we give the span a class of setup and the h1 a class of punchline. And then in our select, we use the CSS class name selector instead. And I just find this just gives it a little bit more of a, a meaningful description as to what's going on. Now if we run our application, so now we can see that the setup has an extra question mark and that the punchline is now a H1 tag. So in summary, sometimes the nature of a component means that the consumer would like to customize the view, the presentation of the data in a unique way for each use case. And rather than trying to predict all the different configuration properties to support all the use cases, we can instead use content projection, giving the consumer of our component the power to configure the presentation of the component as they want.